There is this question, though, around Democrats versus Republicans. And you have people like Kanye West who's saying, listen, I'll, you know, love you guys and, and Democrats. Excuse me one second. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, well, you know where I'm going with this. You know, Kanye, Kanye says that, you know, we, it's time out for Democrats. What do you guys think? Uh, well, I think that, first of all, you know, Kanye is an artist, man. Yes. And, and he's a genius. Absolutely. Oh, uh, you know, I, well, what are we saying right now? I think that the angle he's seeing things from is about the division that he sees. And, and he's not inconsistent with what he's saying. For instance, a decade ago, I read a quote where he said he wanted to, to take the Confederate flag and reappropriate it some other different kind of way. I mean, it's a MAGA hat, whatever, man. The, the thing that's scary about this presidency is after it. I don't know if you've been married before or had a girlfriend and, and said something in a fight that was so wrong, and then after that. We, we still family, we still around each other, but man, I sure did say all that shit, didn't I? Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm not mad at Kanye, that's my brother. Mm. I love him, I support him, I buy his albums. No but, claps! Oh man, that was rough! I, no, whether people clap or not, whether people clap or not, but you know, I don't have to agree with everything that he says, I, I, just, I just trust him as a person of intent. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, he shouldn't say all that shit, but... <laughs> but but, but let, let, me, let, me, let me take it on, on the argument then, so to take his personality out of it. Uh, uh, what about the argument he's making, which is that, you know, it's almost, you're in this PC prison, you can't say anything, and, and, and you're not allowed to vote for Republicans if you're, if you're African American. Uh, what's your argument to people who feel like it's time to give Republicans a chance? Uh, well, why, you know, hell, I mean, this is, it's a... It's, a, it's an argument being made by a minority. But I, well, I'll say this. I'm not a partisan dude. If he ran as a Republican, I'd vote Republican. If I, if I got a chance to vote for somebody like this, I'm voting for this somebody like This isn't about party. Like this is about ideas. That's right. The ideas have kind of migrated from party to party. The Democrats used to be much more conservative. Today, however, unfortunately, there's only one party that stands for civil rights. There's only one party that stands for environmental protection. And... We have to, as voters, really listen to the ideas. What I say to folks is that look, the war on drugs has failed. Trickle-down economics has failed. We have to have the courage to put ideas on the table that actually lift up working families, white, black, brown, Native American, Asian American. We've got to move beyond the labels of party and look at ideas, but let's also be clear. Donald Trump's party is Donald Trump's party. And what they stand for right now, we have to fight with everything we have. The other big issue, you, you, we're talking about race, talking about class, gender. We're now in the situation where a whole new set of voices is coming forward. How do you guys look at the role of this new movement uh, for women's empowerment, the Me Too movement, et cetera? I hope it succeeds. What we all have to realize is that we all have to stand up in this moment and say that these women who have the courage to step forward, these Men, in many places, the courage to step forward who were sexually assaulted as well. We have to believe survivors. We have to have their back. And we have to figure out how we finally leap forward. Because we've been staying stuck for a long time. It shattered a lot of lives. And enough is enough. Yeah, I think that for most men, especially the men that I'm talking to, one, I'll tell you that as a movement, it's effective. Like, in, in Hollywood, the, the, the man, they are buttoning up. Which is good. Which yeah, is good. It's better than good. It's, it's, it's necessary. Two, I'll say that there's a lot of men that are learning for the first time the extent of the plight of the women in their lives. We're well, just learning that consent is important. Most of our states, they don't teach consent when they teach sex ed. Think about that. That's right. And this is a tough discussion, but it needs to be had. Yeah. And people need to learn the lessons. And we need to listen to one another. Yeah. I think that some people are so threatened by the movement or well, they're so worried about it that they're not hearing the messaging behind it. Mm -hmm. But I think it's an idea this time has come, and we'll see. Did, did you watch Ka the Kavanaugh uh, 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 testimony, the hearings, all that kind of stuff? Uh, I've seen, I've seen highlights. Yes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. What, what, what was your, what was your uh, take and impression? It, could you imagine an African American or a female yelling at them senators like that? Uh, oh, you mean the way that Kavanaugh yelled? Yeah. Um, or any of it. You know, man. I'm, you know, I'm from this area. Like, I grew up around here, 
And, and the, the, the sad thing about it is, I believe, sadly, if that woman had gone to the police in 1982 and told them exactly what she had told the Senate, that he wouldn't have gone to jail. Not in that place, not in that time, not with no name like Brett Kavanaugh. Mm. Uh, it, was, it was daunting. It also made me sad that this is a national discussion that's happening during a Supreme Court nominee's hearing. It's a tough time for this country, man. Famously on, on SNL, uh, you said uh, uh, you wanted to give Trump a chance, but you also wanted to make sure that he gave disenfranchised people a chance. Looking at the Trump presidency almost two years in, do you feel that he gave disenfranchised people a chance? It's hard to tell where Trump uh, ends and his constituents begin, but I think that the rhetoric of his presidency is repugnant. Okay. I just don't like the way he talks. I don't like, uh, you know, there's certain, we're living in a time where there's got to be a little more cultural sensitivity. And, and even a guy like me that's just writing jokes, I have to listen more than I've ever had to listen because the gripes are coming so fast and furious. And, and, and I'm not dismissive of people's gripes. It might sound like it on stage, but, but I, I listen. And, and, and as a president of a country that's as, as eclectic as ours, you know, you look around your crowd, you see it's like a patchwork of people I just think that uh, he's speaking to a very small choir. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there's so many more opinions that he's, the way he, just the way he engages the public is dismissive. I don't like talking bad about the president, but I, I said we should give him a chance because he's the president of the United States now. Well, what choice do I have? Right, right. But I think you also apologized for that sometime later, didn't you? Well, I don't ever apologize, yeah, but yeah. Just, yeah, what, what I you said say? is, I, <laughs> <laughs> I said I shouldn't have said that shit. <laughs> 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 let's be clear, right? Let's be clear. Donald Trump is playing a politics of divide and conquer. He's picking scapegoats all day long. Mm -hmm. Muslims, Mexicans, immigrants, black folks, women. It goes on and on. Yep. Right. Occasionally, you know, and so what do we do in that moment? We actually have to listen to each other. We have to talk to each other respectfully. We got to pull each other together because the only thing that beats the politics of divide and conquer is the politics of unite and prosper. Mm. And that's only possible if we're willing to respect each other and listen to each other.